Let's do this. Rolling. Okay. Cool. Bitch, real quick. <coughs> Get the jitters out. It's <coughs> 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 Don't talk too loud. Don't talk too loud. My voice carries. <laughs> yes, we just talk like a normal level. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for me. You'll figure it out. Sorry. Can we, at the end of the year, put a big blooper video together? Absolutely. 100 <laughs> fucking percent. <coughs> Three, two, one. What's going on, family peeps? What the fuck was that? Sorry. Hold on. Big brother. What the, somebody's always watching. Always listening. You sure that didn't shut it off? <laughs> What's going on, YouTube? Yeah. Elevate Golf is back at you for episode four. 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 Say four. 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 We have four. Nick, we have Raven, and we have Vinny coming at you live. Well, kind of. Sort of. It's live right now. Yeah. So I hope you guys are enjoying uh, the first three episodes. And then the two uh, golf courses that we dropped, we dropped Bedford Hills and South Toledo. South Toledo. That drops when? Monday. That actually just dropped. Yes. Monday. Yes. So hope you guys are enjoying all the content. We're just trying to have a lot of fun doing this. And we are. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having literally a blast. Mm -hmm. having a blast. Yeah, having a blast. Um, I was just talking to a gentleman the other day. Um, he's like, I hear you got a, a podcast on YouTube and so on and so forth. I'm like, yeah. He's like, can I get the, what do you call that thing? The link. The link. The link. The link. I'm not tech. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you do? That's, that's why these, these guys are here. The yahoos. The yahoos. Two of my favorite people on the planet. Um, but I, we, we really truly just hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, we're having a blast doing it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, three topics today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are the three topics? We're talking about um, the introduction of our new, uh, another course that we're going to golf. <laughs> we got him again. We're going to talk about pace of play and the analytics of golf. And analytics. I was not listening at all when you guys said that. <laughs> That's okay. We love it. These, the, these, this is the, this is. The reason why I love doing this is because people understand that this ain't scripted. We don't have no We're teleprompters raw. or whiteboards or nothing. Can this is want. just as raw as you get with <laughs> three guys. For Nick? <laughs> and Nick is always the, uh, what is it, the brunt of the joke? Yeah. Because we always catch them just when um, it's funny. Exactly. So um, <laughs> so we are, we are going to talk about, first of all, there's been over the last two or three weeks, Pace of play. What does that mean? I know what it means on our end. And, you know, you're hearing all the PGA, LPGA, Corn Ferry Tour. You're hearing everybody talk about slow play. Does it really affect you that much? You want my honest opinion? Oh, yeah, because I'm going to give mine. Yeah, I, uh, I think it does for some people. Like for you and I, when we go golf. And we get stuck behind somebody who's a foursome or whatever it may be, we tend to golf a little worse than what we would because we could finish 18 holes in like two and a half hours. Yeah. Like our pace of play is really fast. Yes. Compared to anybody else. That really. is facts. I mean, it's insane how fast we can golf a course. It's actually really crazy to think about it. But I think it affects it. Um, it just messes up your game. I, I truly think so. What about you? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I guess it comes down to, like, how my game goes, right? I, I don't think about anything. I just get up and I hit the ball. So when you have those guys in front of you, like you said, that are going slow, it, I think it 100% affects the way that I'm going to play that round. Like, when we shot well, – where did we shoot last week? God, we golfed so much. Where yeah, we golfed nine holes on Monday. It was, oh, it was Valley. Oh, Valley Way. Yeah. So we were stuck behind mm -hmm. three sets of yeah. four yeah. that were all going slow. And I think our first three or four holes took an we hour. Completely shit the bed. It yeah, was, we did. It was terrible. Yeah. I mean, we were hitting balls like we were hitting the ball like we would never hit it normally. It's true. Right. And then once we got those three groups nicely, let us pass, which was cool. And after that, we were all we were both hitting the ball well, just because there wasn't. I think when you have too much time to think about what your next shot is, exactly. you're switching clubs and you know, all that stuff, and I think that really affects the outcome of your shot. You know how I fix pace of play? 
<laughs> I will hit into your ass in a second. <laughs> and I agree, but at the same time, it's like the people in front of you could be, you know, new <clears throat> beginners, whatever it may be. But at the same time, it's like if you know you're going slow and you see people behind you, it's like common courtesy to kind of just hey let's let these guys play through real quick right, you know that is one thing the new generation of golfers uh is lacking as golf etiquette yeah and so if all you uh any of you new golfers out there have been playing for a year or two years you really need to look at what the course breakdown is and you really need to understand golf has an etiquette portion of it and if you're playing slow let people go through yeah exactly and you you'll you'll know because it's kind of like you'll feel it like People are right behind you, like yeah. You almost want to be like, come on. Yeah, and I think that it, like you know, say we have four of us, and there's one guy golf behind us. That's just a great golfer. Right. We let him pass. Oh, you know, he always come. You know, that seems to always happen in like the middle of a hole. Yes. And you go up and you rush your shot faster than I normally would, and then you kind of mess that up too. So. But you know what's funny about when we get let people people let us go through? What mm -hmm. usually happens? Shit the oh, bed. <laughs> we should, we so, now you, so now you got eyes on you, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're up there and you're ready and you just had some magnificent shots. Yeah. And then you get you let a two somewhere, a three somewhere, a four some pass you up because they're playing slow. Yeah. We get up and set the tee and we duff it. Every time. It's embarrassing as hell. It really and is. I know you all understand and know what we're talking about. So let me ask you another question. So pace of play is based off of a lot of different scenarios. Whether you're you're new to the game, you know I've been watch I watched the Masters, I've watched the RBC, I've watched uh, uh, um, the lot the LPGA, the lot um, uh, the lot uh, classic. Um, watched a couple Corn Ferry Tour events, and we watch golf every week. Okay, so I've let's let's just call them out. Cantley, Cantley is being uh, scrutinized a lot over the last two or three weeks. Yeah, I watched um, a video. Somebody made a like another meme, and it was him trying to start off the drive. And there was this video next to it, and it took the exact amount of time for that video to finish for him to finally hit his drive. Yeah, crazy. I thought it was just on loop. No, but it wasn't. It was the same routine like forty times. Yeah. And he's he's catching a lot of shit with it right yeah. now. But he knows that he is. I mean, what what happened? And what just happened? When he when he, he hit, hit a hole in one, he hit a hole in one. But he also that one shot that he put on the uh, railroad railroad tie, mm -hmm. and I think it took him fifteen minutes to decide what he was going to do, and then he ended up hitting off of it instead of taking a drop and actually put it on the green. Right. That actually brings up my next question. I know how I golf, and I know how a lot of mid amateurs golf and usga college kids so on and so forth i sit here and watch pros all day long i mean literally i watch golf probably five six days a week at some point whether it's my phone mm -hmm. whether it's golf channel whether it's on my computer whether it's snippets of things that change in my game but i sit here and watch these guys analyze shots and 70 percent of the time they're throwing grass up in the air. And I understand that wind changes directions of balls. Not that much. Right. Especially their ball speed and their club head speed. It don't change that much. Mm -hmm. But at, at what point is changing five different clubs, but going back to the original club well, that you had, use, yeah. and you hit it 20 feet from the pin most of the time, for pro golfers right some of them will get close but it's a very small percentage so at what point do you just go up you already did you you golf six days seven days a week right you already know what club you need from 100 out you already know what club you need from 200 out i'm sorry the wind ain't gonna change that much mm -hmm. go hit the damn ball right what's your thoughts I mean, I, I agree. I think that who was I watching the other day? Who was who was in the uh, final pairing of that of the RBC? Was it what was his name? The one that was golfing with his brother today? Oh, Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fitzpatrick and was it Jordan Spieth? 
Yes. And I think it was, I mean, I get it. It was a playoff hole, so you're definitely going to think more in depth of that. But it was like just grabbing clumps of grass and throwing it in the, throwing it in the air. And I just think ultimately it, it takes it takes away from me the viewership side of it. I don't want to watch. I want to watch people go up and hit golf balls. And when you're sitting Thank there you. waiting someone three, four, five, six, ten minutes to hit a ball, it's like, come on, figure it out, man. But like you said, you practice every single day. You know what you need to do. Why don't you just go do it? Every like, like say the upcoming event. Okay, I I understand it's four ball, two ball. I mean the uh, dessert classic that's coming up. The uh, RBC was just there. Great, great tournament. I mean, it was what <laughs> watching those. <coughs> Why do I always call? It's the same course. No, oh, but uh, what I'm saying is, said it was just there. these guys come in. The, the tournament starts on Thursday. A lot of these golfers come in on Tuesday. They're golfing practice rounds. Mm -hmm. You already know. Take the nonsense out of the game. Now, when you get up on the green, I get it. The greens, the breaks. I mean, even at the Masters, I mean, you got to hit. You got to put the ball up here to come down here. Right. I get it. You got to take a few extra minutes on your putts on some of these courses, but a lot of these courses that the PGA play and the LPGA play, I'll challenge you, and I'm not that good, and I ain't gonna take ten minutes to hit a ball. Fair enough. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I I agree. Um, a lot of if you break it down, it could be considered overthinking, right? And, 100 and then nine times out of 10 they shit right. the bed anyway they shit the bed anyways and that could be it or have you guys thought about this what if they're doing it on purpose so him and i talked about that today to do it on purpose and sit there and screw with the people who you know are fast-paced players making them to too make them time. too much time messing yeah. up their game but at the end of the day if they don't you know what is the word i'm looking for um capitalize on it it's not worth anything, right? Exactly. You shit your your bed, but you also are trying to make a mess out of them as well. I mean, what do we talk about all the time with our staffs? What's that? If you're good enough, you can beat anybody. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You don't have to slow the game down to beat right. somebody. You know one person that I love dearly, and he's probably the fastest setup and fastest golfer in the PGA right now, is John Rahm. Yeah. What's John Rahm done this year? One he's one. won four tournaments. Yeah. He's, I, mean, I think he's placed most of his tournaments in the top ten. Mm -hmm. He's a lead money winner, but he doesn't dick around. Nope. He gets up. He already knows what club he's going to use. I very rarely ever see the man pull out a club and put it back in and pull something else out. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. They're all professional golfers. You know it. This ain't the first time that you shot at this course. Nope, I agree. It's don't really don't tell wild. me that shit. So, stop overthinking it. But yeah. like you said earlier, I think a lot of it comes down to analytical, right? Yeah. The analytic side of it. I mean, you look at any sport, like you said earlier, you look at the uh, like the NFL, they have the AWS probability percentage. Yes. And I think that professional golfers are looking too deep into that. 100%. And thinking, Mike. okay, so if I hit it here on the club and I hit it that direction, it's going to land here. Just go hit the ball and try to get it close. I don't think that looking at your percentages of hitting a specific shot with a specific club with wind and whatever it may be, play the game. One hundred percent agree with you. Play the game. Play the game you've played since three years old. Right. You already know. Yep. I know one hundred and fifty yards out what my club is. You guys playing footsie? <laughs> I'm trying that. to do it on the slot. <laughs> um, I know at one hundred fifty yards what my club is. I know at one hundred ninety yards what my club is. <laughs> I don't care what the wind direction is. If, if it's the wind's blowing in my face, I'm going to tee it down lower and I'm going to hit more of a line drive. Yeah. I'm not going to put it up into cyberspace. Right. Yeah. And also thinking, going back on pace of play too, like people look up to these professional golfers and what's, you watch golf, what do you want to do? You want to go golf. You want to go oh, play 18 time. holes. Oh. So now you have all these guys who are following all their favorite golfers going out thinking, okay, let's take our sweet ass time. Let's check wind direction, make sure the green's slope is this way or this way, reading the right club. And it could have an effect with pace of play on like courses like us. And we're nowhere near professional level. Yeah. But a lot of people, we're like, not to even go, people like to go act like it, you know? So it right. could be a cause and pace of play is, yeah, that's, that's 
But again, you, I mean, we got white pine right at the beginning of the season. You were out of town. Before we, you, yeah. Was before any of this was Yeah, bastards. Started. You were out of town. Yeah. Where were you golfing? California? <laughs> Camelback. Yeah, get out of here. Arnold Palmer's signature, Nick uh, Tallow. Yeah, yeah. But when we got there, I I don't know what made me do it, but I was looking very in-depth at the scorecard, and I think it said like four hours and like you know, whatever the minutes were, yeah. but it was that's the pace of play you're expected to stay on. So technically, if they're staying on that, can you really bitch right. about that? Like Just because we golf faster than the average person does not mean that they have to speed their game up. Because some people may like to play a little slower because maybe that's how they're comfortable. Well, and I, I get it, but you... Like your mom and I was talking last night. I love golf. I mean, I can't. I don't even know what level to say how much I love to golf. And I would golf seven days a week if I could. Right. But I don't want to live on a golf course. I want to go shoot golf. I want to get it done in two and a half, three hours max. I don't want to be on a golf course for six hours. Right. Who has that much time? Yeah. No. I, you know what I'm saying? You guys don't have that much time. You guys got full time jobs. All right. No, I agree. I don't want to go out and spend. Now, I'll spend four or five hours if I'm going to golf 36 holes. Mm -hmm. If my old ass hip would pick, you know, allow, allow me to do that. But it's like, you know, we, I golf today. I had a meeting today and then we went and had lunch. And he's like, you want to hit nine? I'm cool. Let's, let's hit nine. I'm good. And so I went and golfed at a course that I, I don't, I shit the bed every single time. Because one, it's too long, and it takes too long. But I've never broke a hundred at this course before. It's not an elevate course, so. But I went out, and we ended up shooting eighteen holes. I shot a ninety-two, and I had thirty-nine putts. But there's one thing that I did on this championship seventy-two hundred yard golf course is I hit the fairway, and I didn't. I didn't flag hunt. I put my ball at the center of the green, whether it was on two or whether it was on three, because I know I'm not good enough to flag hunt. Right. But what happens when you flag hunt? You usually hit it short, you hit it in the sand, or you hit it over. Right. Because yes, we're not we're not made that way or we're not trained that way. Yeah. So my goal is to get on in regulation or get on in three and putt for a par. Mm -hmm. On par fives, I'm usually putting for a birdie. I did every single hole, but I just couldn't putt today. Now, <clears throat> do I take an extra two or three minutes and slow my pace of play down? Not to two and three putt? Maybe if I was in a competition, but maybe not because that's not me. Right. You guys love to putt, hop in the cart, go to the next hole, and not have to wait. That's how we golf 18 holes in two and a half hours. Right. Three hours max. Yep. Hell, there were some times last summer we were golfing 18 holes at 6.30 in the morning. We were done in two hours flat. Yeah, because we're the only ones out there. Because we're the only ones out that's, there. That's not what we were trained that. to do. I'm not included in that. He can't because he's got to be to work early. We don't. Yeah. yeah. But that's so, how we trained ourselves to be that you know quick yes. and learn to just get up on the ball, make a shot, and keep rolling. The and nice thing about a cart. Pressure, you know. The nice thing about technology in this day and age, I already know the yardage before I get up to the cart. I mean, before I get up to the yeah. uh, tee box. Yep. And nine times out of ten, because we golf at the same 10 to 15 courses all year, we're adding some this year because of Elevate. Mm -hmm. But we already know. These guys have golfed these courses before. You two need some time alone? He's along? shaking his leg and it's bothering He does that all the time. I do. It's bothering me. Do what I do. Kick his shin. No, just, don't kick my shin. I just lightly <laughs> put my hand on his thigh and I need help, made guys. it disappear. I'm being abused. I love it. So, yeah, I mean, pace of play, analytics of golf. <laughs> eh, do you need it? Do you have, I mean, overthinking shit, just like in life, when you overthink it, you usually make a bad decision. And you know who the best at overthinking a shot is? Hmm. I want to hear what you guys think. You're talking about PGA. 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 Oh, I was, I was like, like myself. Name, myself. <laughs> um, who do you think? Oh, I mean. I'm going to give you two. I think my boy Colin Morikawa does all the time. I mean, as he. See, I'm going to give you three. I always forget about him. Yeah, he overthinks a I lot of Justin stuff. Justin Thomas a lot. Justin Spot Thomas. on, brother. Yeah, Justin Thomas. Watching him golf, man. 
because he, he starts off so hot, and I think he lets the leaderboard get into his head. Yep. And if he's up in the top five, top ten, yep. it's like, okay, now I really got to start going for it. And yep. that's when he starts messing up his shots. And... Who's the other one? Rory. Rory freaking McIlroy. Yeah, Rory McIlroy. I'm going to give you one more, but I, he cracks me up. Who's that? Jordan freaking Spieth. Yeah. yeah. Him and his caddy. All day. All day long. <laughs> he grabs more clubs on a shot. That I have ever seen any, and I love you, Jordan. I, Roy, love you. We all do. Uh, Justin Thomas, yeah, you're okay. But at the end of the day, think about it. Stop overthinking it. You guys are the best in the world. And I think that's what costs them They're, the doves all the time, especially Roy. And that's why I love John Rob because he just doesn't give an F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just doesn't give a shit. No, he's, my, he's, he's there to play, to there to win. You know, he's, he's already got hence, that mindset. Hence the reason why he's the money leader this year, and he's won four tournaments. He's got what four or five top tens, and I think he's got one out of the top fifteen. Right. But I, I don't know. I just, I, I just don't understand it. Yeah. So the breakdown really is pace of play. <laughs> if you're new, you're new to the game. Understand that people are going to be behind you. Absolutely. And just let them play through. And don't take, you know, try to find your balls, things like that. If it's. We have a rule. Yeah, 30 second rule. We have 30 second rule. Yeah. Like, pick your ball up, put it in a spot. Sometimes for me, it's like 10. I'm like, I don't care. (laughs) I hit cheap balls. I don't hit the expensive ones like these guys do. I go for the top flight. But if you, if, again, <laughs> yes, balls aren't that expensive. Mm-hmm. You don't need a Pro V1. No. You don't need a TaylorMade. You don't need that, especially if you're three years or less. You yeah. don't need any you're of that stuff. Out, the top know. flight balls or the Callaway Chrome Softs, you can buy a, 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 a box of four sleeves for what, 20 bucks, yeah. 29 bucks? Not the Chrome Softs. The, the, top flight, the top flight balls, you can get a bucket, bucket. for 30, yeah. Yeah. and there's like 100 balls in there. You don't need you don't need all this uh, extra you don't need all this extravagant shit when you you're really starting don't. out. Yeah. But everybody's just got to play the you know, play the part and right. have all the cool shit. If you're losing 18 balls on 18 holes, you don't need to be buying expensive balls. That's what I'm saying is that the pros are doing it. It affects us to be like, "Oh, let's go shoot what the pros are." Back to pace of play. When these guys are overthinking it, you got groups of guys that want to play like them. And they go out and do the same shit. Oh, yeah. And these PGA, NLPGA, and all these people, they have people that put little flags next to their balls. <laughs> you don't even have to look for them. And the crowd that just circles, circles around, around Absolutely. Them, you know? So, yeah. yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to th- throw this out there. And I know it ain't going to go anywhere. But if you want to play handicap golf, you take, your, you take your handicap, I'll take mine, and I'll play anybody. And I'll play them anywhere you want. And I'll tell you, you don't need all that bullshit. And I'm not that good. Mm-hmm. I'm not. But come on. Better than us. Mm-hmm. I would I would love to go play heads up with a McElroy or a Justin Thomas or a Jordan Spieth or a Max Homa or a Matt Fitzpatrick. I would love to go play heads up with them. Give me 18 and 20 strokes. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's I'm run. in. Sign me up. I meet you day. wherever you want to go. At the end of the day, you're gonna have fun. So hell yes, <laughs> because matters. I can videotape that I golfed with one of these guys, exactly. and they're still gonna whip my ass, but I'm okay. Exactly. But I'm gonna speed it up, and they ain't gonna they ain't gonna lollygag around. Right? Give them Come no on. Cho- give them no chance. No, no Come whatsoever. Yeah. I'll be standing right behind them. I'll show them what golf etiquette's not. <laughs> I'll be my shadow be all up in their ball and shit. Yeah. You know, there's hey. You gonna Strategic. Hit it? You're going to hit it? Just standing on him? Come on, hit the ball. Uh, head music playing on the cart and shit. <laughs> and I ain't walking either, so I'm right. So we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna take a 30-second break, and we're going to talk about our next up-and-coming course. And uh, we're going to give a shout-out to our sponsors here very shortly. We do have a new sponsor that gave us a call, um, and we appreciate them. And we have to give a shout-out to our number one fan real quick before we go to break. Do it. Ready? Uncle Bic. Oh, shit. Uncle Bic. <laughs> Benny! Benny, man. Our number one fan. He's literally our number one Dude, fan. Dude, he, he seriously, he is phenomenal. Yeah. And I know I talked about this, but we got him his uh, first set of clubs. Yeah. And we're going to, in June, once he turns three, we're going to get him into some golf lessons. Let's go. So, Benny, Uncle Bic, Raven, and Papa, love you. See you in 30.
Yo, 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 we are back. Thanks for staying staying tuned with us while we took a 30-second break. Uh, we want to give a shout-out to our two sponsors today, which one of them is new, and one loves us so much that just keep coming back. We're going to give a shout-out first to Soup Mediterranean Grill. Mm. Downtown Toledo, Ohio. Musa and his staff are the best in Toledo. No. Hands down. Tracy and I love like it's hard to top. We hate going anywhere else. Oh, uh, the ambiance, the prices. The prices. Oh. You know, we're all about prices, right? And I'm gonna tell you what. They have a duck dish. If I have this dish anywhere across the country when I'm out at a meeting, it's a fifty, sixty dollar dish all day long. Mm -hmm. Musa and his staff, twenty nine, thirty bucks, and it is the best <laughs> duck I've ever had. Best hummus I've ever had. That's the only thing I get. Lights out. If you have not, these two, go. Tell them. I mean, I, they get like crazy shit. I get pizza. They got <laughs> they're, 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 they they're, yes. like spicy Italian pizza that I literally get every single time I go. He does. And I'll get the wedge salad sometimes. You know. I'm going to tell you, we I'll love it. Carbs. We love soup so much. Where is your rehearsal dinner? Too. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. So I'm telling you what, if you're in the mood for Mediterranean with a <laughs> flair of Italian, with a little bit of, I don't even know what. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yeah. It's just really great selection. And oh. it's just so good, especially their appetizers, the hummus. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, the, uh, their, their kafta, their yeah. grape leaves, yeah. um, their calamari. Their pasta dishes. Oh, their pasta, their uh, wild boar bolognese. Yeah. Musa, keep doing what you do. Amy, keep doing what you do. Get out downtown Toledo, right across the street from the farmer's market. Hmm. You got to get out and see Musa and his staff. You I'm will hungry. not regret it. I know <laughs> it it's making good. me hungry right now, right? <laughs> and then, of course, <clears throat> our number one sponsor, Blind Unicorn Marketing, Kara and Brian. I'm telling you, if you guys need any type of website, SEO, SEM content, creative, Anything you have to do to help push your business along, give Brian and Kara a call because they will hook you up. Shout out, Bon Unicorn. Thank Bye. you both to our sponsors. You guys rock. We can't do this without you. We Absolutely. love you. Peace. Now, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to talk. You know, we love coming to you every Thursday. <coughs> we do. And we love to give everybody a shout out that we possibly can. And what we're going to talk about right now is the golf course the, the golf course that's up next for Elevate Golf. And that is White Pines Golf Club out in Swanton, Ohio on route State Route 2. It is literally a hidden gem in this town. Literally hidden. Hidden gem in this town. County Road 2. County Road 2. Sorry. No, you, Did you, I say State Route 2? Yeah, I know you folks from White House don't understand what county roads are, but us from Swanton. We understand. He's a Swantucky guy. Swantucky. So, so, so start, sorry, County Road 2 in Swanton, Ohio. And it is, like I said, it's a hidden gem. Hands down. Beautiful. It's really country club-like. What you think when it comes to the grass, the greens, the yeah. scenery. And what, the, the difficulty. It's, it's not super hard. They have some really nice holes, but they do have a lot of challenging aspects with a decent amount of sand some long drives with yes. some water hazards you absolutely know, it's, it's, overall it's a very fun course especially if you're up for a little bit of a challenge absolutely and they have one of the hardest holes i've ever played it's a dog leg left it's a par five yeah i yeah. can't wait to hit it because i never do good on that that hole mm -hmm. but i'm driving the ball a lot farther now so hopefully I can make that corner and try to get on in two or three. So we'll see what happens there. But give it a shout out. I even know right now until July fourth, eighteen holes with a cart, especially after three p.m. is twenty six bucks. Can't beat it. No, not you can't course. beat it. And what we when we uh, I think Raven and I and his uh, future father stepfather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And me and Mike, we all went on a Sunday morning. Again, prior to That's still horseshit because I was left out. He was in California golfing. And it was right after we just had torrential downpours for pretty much a week straight. We really couldn't get in anywhere else mm -hmm. because they were all flooded. 
drainage wise, probably one of the best courses I've played. It was not super wet. There wasn't, you know, you weren't driving through puddles everywhere. It was just a really well taken care of course. If we're not filming or anything like that, and we're just going <coughs> to go hit 18 and if we just had rain, that's the course I always recommend. Yeah. Because I know it's never wet. No. If it's wet, it's just a little bit. Yeah. But like any other course around here, completely soaked. And that's why I really love White Pines. Like it's probably one of my favorite courses. You guys obviously know that besides South Toledo, but. I put I, I think I put or we were talking about it the other day and we put it on our Facebook page mm -hmm. the top five courses in Northwest Ohio yeah. and White Pines was on one of those five yeah it just it's a beautiful course everything about it is maintained very well the trees just give it a nice ambiance and the ponds and it's just you got to go golf it I mean if you haven't yet it's just you got to get out there the uh, the trees <laughs> I've never golfed at Augusta but it's on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm not rich, so it's probably never going to happen unless you guys at Augusta invite us out to play. Elevate golf. Elevate, Elevate golf, golf, baby. Elevate. Bring us out. We'll, we'll show it up. Um, but the pine straw, if yeah. you do hit it in the trees, it's kind of that same, same. Yeah. you know, picturesque, manicured, just like hole 13 and 12 at Augusta. Yeah. I mean, a lot yeah. of the holes remind me of that just watching it on TV because, of course, I've never been there. But, yeah, you got to get out. And we're gonna we're gonna drop it um, on Monday, yep. um, and it's just a very fun. The energy is awesome, <clears throat> and it's challenging. The greens are challenging, but it's playable. Yeah, that's what I love about it. Yep. And that's where uh, LLA Golf will take on the next step. It'll be White Pine. So I mean, I'm excited. That. Because I think the excited. last time we all golfed it, it was cold as shit. Yeah, windy, <laughs> super windy. I don't remember. And cold. Was, was, he, was, was he with us? Either. I'm not sure. I don't get invited often. I'm not sure. I can't help but you got a shitty ass work schedule. I wonder who runs that. <laughs> <laughs> Always coming back at me. Anyways, guys. So, uh, <laughs> LMA Golf takes on White Pine. So, stay tuned for that. And it's going to be a blast. It really is. So, I w we wanted to share with you guys real quick. Because we've been, we've been getting emails throughout the week. And we have, uh, I have two, we have 20, 29 emails just in the last four days. Um, and Tim from Swanton, that's funny, uh, just asked, what made you guys want to do this podcast slash YouTube channel slash Facebook page? So, Tim from Swanton, we love this game. And again, as we've stated multiple, multiple times, we're below average at this game but outside of family we love to golf mm -hmm. so we all got together and i think it was in my office one day mm -hmm. that we need to start doing something like this We're, yeah and it was about a year ago when we started talking about this and we just finally said screw it let's go have some fun and let's film it so if it's something that you're thinking of doing or you want to go out and golf with us three we always save this four spot for different people. And I think we have like six or seven people slotted right now that want to come golf with us. Yeah. So you can, you already got a hold of me. You want to get a hold of Raven. You want to get a hold of Nick. It's Raven at elevategolf.org. Nick at elevategolf.org. And of course, Vinny at elevategolf.org. We will field any questions, any comments, anything. You want it again, he, Raven and Nick talked about it last week and two weeks ago. If you want us to talk about something on this podcast, shoot us an email. Yeah. We're going to answer every single one, good, bad, or indifferent. It just right. doesn't matter. This was a cute one. Here. This is Jacob, gotcha. age eight. I don't know. I Hopefully he's on his dad's Gmail or, or mom's <laughs> Gmail or whatever. But he's like, I have watched the first two episodes and I love everything that I see. We got you, brother. Absolutely. Sorry for the swear words. Yeah, don't repeat them. Mute that stuff out. Fudge. So <laughs> Fudge. Fudge. we're going to keep coming to you because we are having a ball. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're passionate about it. You guys know that from the first, second, third, fourth video, whatever it may be. And we just love golf and we're just normal people like you and we just decided that let's share our experiences and it's memories for us too. That's that's the key thing mm -hmm. is we're having fun doing it. We're boys that are just chewing the fat and Absolutely. having a good time. Yeah. 
and golfing. Love every bit of it. What gets better than that? Golf. Chewing the fat, one of my favorite, favorite Chewing the fat. sayings. Yeah. And it reminds me of my dad. Because yeah. my dad used to say it when he had his bars and we we out the campground. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to chew the fat with these guys. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> now you know. So that, that's what it's all about. It's just a bunch of guys chopping it up. Sure. And these guys just ain't a bunch of guys. I mean, these guys are my family by blood. And what's the word? By not blood. By not blood. <laughs> there you go. They're my boys. Literally, they're like my kids. They are my kids. So we just want to keep coming to you and have fun with you guys. I love hanging out with these guys. Um, I do it pretty much six days a week, sometimes seven, seven. <laughs> um, because it's what our life is. And we enjoy our comp We enjoy each other's company. We enjoy hanging out. We enjoy golfing together. And we love doing this and bringing this to you guys. Real life, real life shit coming at you every single day. 100%. And, uh, Again, yeah, shout out. Just make sure you guys look at our website. A lot of the uh, courses that we're going to be golfing will be on there. Again, the apparel will soon to be um, on the website. The apparel well. will be on the website in about eight more days. Cool. So if you want to support the gear. And the is. charities. And the charities. This is, this is everything that we got, and we have more to come. Golf towels, polos, pullovers, hats. Golf balls. Golf balls. Soon to be golf bags. Yeah, so if you want to support us, that's where you're going to support us. And that's again, right. Like and subscribe, and, and I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. And every time you support us, you're supporting a couple of charities that are near and dear to our hearts. Absolutely. So. So. And uh, again, like Raven has said, and you said as well, if there's anything else that you guys want to see that we haven't done or that you guys like to watch, right? Let us know. Send us emails, comment section. It's always open, and we'll, we're open to everything. Absolutely. Again, it's up and coming. It's new. It's just as new for us as it is for you guys. So, And if you guys have a charity golf outing <coughs> that you want to see Elevate at, we're in. Yep. Shoot us an email. You know, tell us about it, and we will show up. Hell, we'll shoot live podcasts there. Yep. So we, we love charities. We love supporting local, um, and we just love everything about what we do. So what we are going to talk about right this second is the wine, because you know us. We're going to bring wine to you every single Thursday. So this is uh, one of uh, the places that we enjoy going to. Yep. Um, it's Cooper Hawks Winery. Um, it's over on Monroe and Secor in Toledo, Ohio. This is their Cabernet. It's a 2020. You can pick this bottle up. Unfortunately, we all became uh, winos over the last couple of years. He's fresh, but he's getting hit. He's getting hooked. He actually went and did Urban Pine Winery. He actually went and did some <laughs> flights. And he we'll said it. He sent it to me and his mom, and we just started cracking up. I'm like, oh, shit, look what Elevate Golf did to Nick. Turned him into a wine head. Yeah, that's awesome. But this is Cooper Hawk Winery. Um, they are a chain, and we don't do a lot of chains. Um, but we uh, became uh, wine members there about a year ago when they opened. And this is one of my favorite wines that they serve. It's $22 if you buy it at the counter. If you eat, if you buy it in the restaurant, it's like forty-eight or forty-nine bucks. But it's a full body, and you can literally taste every grape, every berry, every fig that's in this wine. It's a really good wine. Stop on over at uh, Cooper's Hawk on Secor and Monroe and try them out. Their appetizers are phenomenal. Their Thai yeah. lettuce wraps are the bomb. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna toast and we're gonna fill up some uh, wine glasses. I'm trying to get into wedding weight, so I'm not drinking a whole lot of wine right now. Me too. Yeah, me too. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Why do you talk? <laughs> so we truly, honestly appreciate your time. Anybody that's viewed, anybody that's subscribed, it means the world to us. Um, and like we said, what, two weeks ago, whether it's one or whether it's 10,000, we're going to keep coming to you every single week um, because we just like to hang out with each other. And we like to chew the fat. I like it. I love it. And we're just going to keep spitting stuff at you guys that we see, whether it's on TV or a course, whatever it is. We're going to keep coming back to you live. Hope you enjoyed the segment. Hope you enjoyed Nick, Raven, myself. We love you. Peace out. Benny, 
See you next week. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Salute.